This podcast is part of the Batman Universe Podcast Network, hosted by the BatmanUniverse.net. Check out everything related to Batman and the entire Bat family at the BatmanUniverse.net, including news and original content related to comics, movies, television, merchandise, video games, and more. Also, check out some of the other unique podcasts that TBU has to offer. Consider supporting this podcast by becoming a patron on Patreon. Even $1 can go a long way in supporting this content that you enjoy. Look for a link over at the BatmanUniverse.net to offer your support now. And now, on with the show. Everybody, this is Dublin Bane at back after a week off because uh, of various issue, health issues that Tim and I had. Yes. Um, <laughs> it's, but 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 it's 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 good to be back, Tim. It's good to be back talking with you again. I'm not sure what episode number we're on, um, but we are back, uh, Tim. It's been it it it's it, it's been a uh, heck of two of a two weeks for for you so so why don't you get into that a little bit yeah even longer actually than two weeks <laughs> three weeks so, four weeks yeah, it's, it's yeah. about all. so i after you know two years i finally got hit with covid unfortunately and i guess not getting it these last two years i made up for it because it really got me good it's like Three weeks ago, almost a month ago now, was I just I was at work, felt I kind of had a little cough coming. It's like okay, not a huge deal, but that was the night. Like I left work, got a haircut, went to the store. Then like around the evening, the cough was a little stronger. Kind of like was feeling it in my chest, like mm, that's kind of strange. Then I went to bed, woke up like at one o'clock in the morning, fever, chills, all that good stuff. I was like, oh. Uh, I, but I didn't take the test. I was like, oh, it might just be the flu. But the next day, I figured I was, might as well take the COVID, COVID test. And it came back positive, And it really knocked me out <laughs> for a good week. <laughs> and I'm still feeling it with a cough. I thought I was just telling Dane, if you don't hear me talk as much on this episode, it's because I want to try to keep my cough in control. Because <laughs> I'm still dealing with that. And it's causing like some spasm and pressure in my chest when I cough. So that's still like the last lingering effect of COVID. But yeah, it hit me good. And the frustrating part of it, Dane, was that, like I said, it hit me good for I was like really out of it for about a week, like a week and a half almost. But then I started feeling pretty good. and But I still kept testing positive. That was the thing. Even when I started feeling, oh, I should probably be negative now, came back positive. I was testing positive for like a good three weeks. And it was just this week as we're recording this episode on Saturday, August 27th. This Just this Monday is when I finally got my negative first negative result. And I got sick on August 3rd and it was just a long while for me to get that negative result, but it's negative now. I'm feeling a lot better. Like I said, I'm just dealing with a cough, but as you said, Dave, it's good to be back because it was forever since I've been sick for that long, felt that bad and sick for as long as that was. So this week is finally starting to get back into routine, went back to work and now back to recording our podcast, which feels good. That's good, Tim. Um, it sounds like it really, uh, it, it it really knocked you out, which is weird because, you know, I kind of had no symptoms when I had COVID, and you have you're, you're vaccinated and you have the booster, right? And it seemed like it, it it hit you a little harder. Yeah, that's what I was kind of hoping. Like, oh, if I did get COVID, I'd be one of those who didn't really feel the symptoms, but yet I had it. But no. <laughs> I had almost pretty much everything that went with it, unfortunately. Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, I, I, yeah, I am 
vaccinated, but I, I didn't get the boosters because mm-hmm. I got COVID when the boosters are coming out. And uh. I was like, kind of like, well, you, what's the what's the point of getting the booster right now? Mm-hmm. But um, yeah, I'm glad you're feeling <laughs> better. Um, you had COVID. I had uh, what I thought was an ear infection, <laughs> uh, but it turned out. I not only had an ear infection, I had a sinus infection, <laughs> and I had swimmer's ear, uh, which is, it's it's a hell of a combo. <laughs> let me tell you. Let, let me tell you. It's a, it's a heck of a combo. You know, uh, I, I had a fever. I wasn't feeling good. My ears hurt. Um, not to get too gross, but there was, uh, I had, leakage from my ears which which i i you know come to find out was was pus coming out of my (laughs) ear from the swimmer's ear yeah um i had a really bad migraine headache um again i wasn't feeling good um but yeah uh went to the doctor got the the antibiotics got the uh antibiotic ear drops um feeling better now um the only problem was was at the time of the recording um my ears still hurt a little bit uh but i just couldn't hear for some reason it's like i had some some kind of blockage um in my ear like I, I, you know if 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 i was in my car listening to the radio i couldn't hear the music or the podcast I was listening to, but I could hear the car noise, which was mm. weird. Um, so yeah, I couldn't hear for like a week and a half to two weeks um, after I had the, the the combination of the swimmer's ear, the, uh, the sinus infection, and the ear infection. Um, but yeah, I, j- I just went to the doctor again, and they flushed my ear. And again, not to get too gross, too, but you should have seen all oh. of the, the 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 crap. <laughs> I guess you could say coming out of my ear. I know all too well what you're referring to. I've had that yeah. done to me many times. And actually, I had tried to have that done just like a two weeks before I got COVID because one of my ear was dealing with not hearing good, and I know this was like wax buildup, and they tried yeah. to flush it out, but one in like my right ear. It was like a dry wax that they couldn't get. So I've been trying to take these eardrops to kind of loosen it up. But once I got COVID, I kind of stopped doing that. So I yeah. have to get back on that to get my right ear back. Yeah, you should have. Oh, my God. It was so gross. Oh, yeah. Like it, all of it. It could be it, sick. Yeah. It, 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 like, it, was, it was black, too. Geez. Black earwax. I love it, I too. At least when I did it, like the last time I really had that done was 10 years ago. They go, they want to show it to you. It's like, here, this is what's yeah. inside here. It's like, nah, yeah, no thanks. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, 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 again, not to get too gross on this, but it was pus and earwax at the same time. Oh. <laughs> like it, it, the, the, the water looked like, again, you don't have to show me the, sorry, yeah. nurse, but you don't have to show me this, <laughs> <laughs> but it did show me. It looked like I was telling my girlfriend. Uh, it, it it looked like you have a fish tank and you haven't cleaned it in a year. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the water looked oh, like. Oh man! <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, as soon as I got the ear flush, I could hear perfect, uh, almost perfectly. There was yeah, isn't that a, a great feeling bit. though? <laughs> like, yeah, it was such instant, a great feeling. Yeah, <laughs> and the pressure, like the pressure, and the, I don't know if it's from earwax or if it's air caught caught up in my head but as soon as that happened the pressure in my head just released um and i immediately like felt better because i was, ha- I was still having headaches because there was some kind of weird pressure on like i said if it was from like um i couldn't pop my ears kind of like when you go through a tunnel mm. and you can't uh you pop your ears and you feel a little better uh, it was kind of like that um but yeah, like as soon as I got the ear flush, it was it was better and got the ear drops and you know I'm back at 100 percent hearing at 100 uh, percent. I don't know how I got the ear infection or the um, the, uh, the the sinus or the uh, swimmer's ear. 
I haven't been diving in 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 years. Um, the the only thing I can think of is uh, my nephews. I went into their, I just sat with them in their pool, in in their little uh, blow up pool. Okay. <laughs> so that's the only thing I can. Oh man, imagine that that's the cause. <laughs> Going yeah, in that little I mean, pool. yeah, like they kept on asking me, like you know, ha- do do you go swimming every day? Do you, do you, do you dive? Are, are are you a diver? And it's like no, I I haven't gone to the beach, you know. Or the pool, I guess, in uh, uh, this year. So like, I don't, I don't know, I don't know how that happened. So you know, I feel better. You know, hopefully, I never have to go through that again in my life. That was awful. I'm um, glad you're feeling better, uh, or as good as you can, Tim. I mean, you still have a lingering cough, but at least all of the flu-like symptoms are yeah. gone, right? Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So I I am glad, and um, I can't think of anything better, Tim, than to kick this episode off with than our minute by minute commentary, especially considering that in about two weeks we're gonna get um, the Lord of the Rings TV show, Rings of Power, which I'm sure you're excited about, right, oh, yeah. Tim? Oh yeah, but don't add an extra week, Dane. It's coming next week. September second. Next week. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, it is. Oh, okay. Okay. So. Yeah. Wow. Okay, I have to re. See, I'm rescheduling my, my, my week, because <laughs> I, I thought it was two weeks from now. Okay. So I'm rescheduling my head. Like what I have to do. Okay. Man, All right. Next. Next week could have been so awesome. We would have had that and the premiere of Andor. But, of course, they pushed Andor back towards the end of September. But that would have been the heck yeah. of a weekend, <laughs> having two shows, for a Star Wars show and a Lord of the Rings show premiere on the same week. Yeah, so, like, on your uh, Star Wars podcast, you would have had to talk about both, right? Both Andor and Rings of Power, right? <laughs> Probably not. We're actually we're a lot more disciplined on that show as far as staying on the podcast topic or show's topic than we are on this. But (laughs) Uh, I see. So so you wouldn't have an 11 hour podcast. One talking about Rings of Power and uh, Andor. This will be the podcast to hear or the my Rings of Power thoughts. (laughs) Ah, exclusive. The Tim exclusive. Well, all right. Uh, just so you know, just grab your VHS copy, grab your DVD copy, your Blu-ray copy, your Laserdisc, your HD DVD. Grab your Beta tape. Grab your projector. Grab your Blockbuster membership card. Grab your UHD uh, PSP copy tin. Don't forget about that one. That's the most important one. Uh, grab your Netflix physical subscription copy and the way that peter jackson restored like he restored the, the beatles footage and the world war one footage it's the way he wanted you to see it tim which is the vhs to dvd pc converted copy yes. <laughs> um so grab all of that tim uh specifically that last one and i'm gonna give the countdown so tim are you ready I am ready. All right. Three, two, one. Hit play. Puzzled look on Frodo's face. Okay. There's another one of those ring shots I think you were talking about. <laughs> where the perspective yeah. was a little bigger. And, you know, that's what you want to do with a, with a weapon that can destroy Middle Earth. You know, just leave it on the ground. <laughs> or you know, or so put it in a very good. secure sealed envelope as Gandalf is doing right there. <laughs> no one's and gonna to touch it. Yeah. Yeah. Put it put it on the bottom of a trunk. Speaking of the Lord of the Rings, Rings of Power TV show, I know there's been some like speculation of like, oh, is Gandalf gonna appear in it? Like, is he gonna? Because technically he could, I believe, when that part of the timeline, but nothing's been said that he is. But I kind of hope we do see. We get little teases of Gandalf in that series, or just the wizards or the Istari in general. 
yeah, I was during that say, period, like, it'd be cool. What, what would he be doing? I know that's why right. I want to see it. <laughs> uh, what would he be doing in that? But, I mean, um, not Gwendolyn. Uh, don't <laughs> tell me her to... name, Tim. Oh, dang it, Tim. I was going to try to guess it. <laughs> uh, Galadriel, like, she's a natural, right? And, like, yeah, like, like what is she? She's the main character, yeah. So, so, so she's like 5,000 years old when we meet her in. Uh, uh, Lord of the Rings, Fellowship of the Rings, something like that, I believe. Oh. In the th- definitely in the thousands, yes. Oh, uh, so, so she's seen a lot. Oh, that's why they have her do the uh, the narration, right? Exactly. <laughs> oh, because she, she, she would have been there. She's seen a lot of that stuff, or <laughs> maybe not seen with her physical eyes, but was alive during those time periods. Uh, I see. Huh. Oh, I just realized that, Sam. <laughs> I just realized that Gladriel would have seen all of this, right? Yep. Or or at least heard about it. Wow. Exactly. That's why she's one of the most yeah. powerful <laughs> excuse me, and wise characters in Lord of the Rings. At least when we get to that period of the Third Age. Uh, I see. And, and what age is this show in? It's going to take place in, during the Second Age. Uh, oh, which is Sorry. as the title implies when the rings of power were forged and Sauron uh, became the dark lord hmm. so Sauron's going to be in there then yeah mm-hmm. uh, okay yeah. wow I, ju- I don't know I just realized that that's why they had Gladriel do the um, narration <laughs> Uh, 20 years uh, later, still your mind's still being blown <laughs> <laughs> by facts from the Fellowship of the Ring. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's our minute by minute commentary. And um, Tim, can I throw it over to you for the for our featured topic for this episode? Yeah, and as we missed the uh, last episode, a lot of kind of big stuff happened in regards to Warner Brothers, HBO Max, and dc movies and it's not for the better so i guess we gotta share our thoughts and lament i guess over the recent news that's happening obviously the warner brothers discovery merger the new ceo david salsev i believe his name is i'm probably butchering his last name um not making a well a good introduction to (laughs) them being in charge because obviously the biggest thing hbo max is making tons of cuts to the streaming service tv shows movies and none other bigger than the Batgirl film just being uh, totally gone. I mean, there's been reports, oh, they're going to like destroy it or delete it for the There's no evidence of it, but th- I don't think that's going to be the reality, but they are going to lock it away in a vault somewhere for no one to see it, which is just, I, mean, I was just so bummed when I heard that because we've obviously we've been following the production of it. It was in production. It was finished filming. It wasn't a finished film, but um, it was still in post-production. But the principle of photography has wrapped. And I, I was just liking what I was hearing from it. I mean, the, the suit looked great. Leslie Grace looked really great as background in the costume. Brendan Fraser was going to be Firefly. Of course, Michael Keaton was going to be in there. J.K. Simmons was going to be back as Gordon. So there's a lot of stuff to be excited about now knowing that there, it's a finished film. Like a not finished film, but filming was done on it and there's footage of it that we're now never going to see it's just such a bummer and what makes it worse is the reasoning is that they're doing it mainly discovery is doing it as a tax write-off is the reports mainly and there's been reports that oh it was such a bad film and had bad test audience reactions that's why they're shelving it but that's not really the case it's all because of money and the tax write-off that discovery is going to be able to get with these films and production that i i mean i don't know the exact of like official legal details of it but i believe they're trying to save get money back from this purchase by shelving these films that weren't in production while just dis- like under Disco- warner brothers discovery so they're able to get tax write-off because of that it's something to that effect again i'm not an expert on that stuff but it's all comes down to money and i'm trying to save money after the merger and uh it's just not a good look when an anticipated film from your biggest IPs, which is DC and Batman related characters, and you're shelving 
a movie a lot of people were excited for, which is such a bummer. And it's for the reason that's what makes it too. Again, it's just the reasoning for why it's being shelved and to never be seen because of money. It's so disappointing. And I think just this week we were hearing that they're going to have, this is such a sad term to use, but they're having funeral screenings of the movie for those who worked on it on the Warner brothers lot. Just as a, I guess a gesture to show, before we lock it away forever, you can see your hard work that you were working on, um, what it was amounting to, even before it was finished. So I, I guess it's good that the cast and crew or whoever worked on it got to see a little bit of it. But still, I imagine that's going to be a depressing screening experience. Hence, I guess, why it's being referred to as a funeral uh, screening. So just everything surrounding it is just so messed up. And it's just really disappointing. Again, this more disappointing news surrounded DC movies. So yeah, getting the news a couple of weeks ago that Batgirl was being shelved, uh, I was disappointed with that. Yeah, it's a it's a bad way to start off your merger. Yeah, I mean it's 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 not very good. I mean it's I mean look, if the movie wasn't good, it wasn't good. just release it, right? Um, you release that Super Pets movie or whatever that's called. Um, but if it's a tax write-off, it's like, it's, how much of a write-off is it, you know? Yeah, like, like how much are you actually going to be saving? Saving? Like, like, why don't you just release that one movie? Like, everybody wants to see it. Um, everybody's mad at you for that. Like, Like, why don't you just release that one movie? I mean, like, if, I don't know, if, if the things uh, things were shifted and like people were complaining about like that looting tunes movie not coming out that also got canceled with with the, with, um, with bad girl like, actually it was a scooby-doo movie that got canceled scooby-doo yeah. right right it was, it was like a looney tunes tv show that got axed to or something uh, no, we'll but, get uh, to that don't worry <laughs> <laughs> okay but like, well, just just release it. Like, if if people really want to see it, just, then just release one, or two, or three. I mean, is it like a when package? they're done, that's the thing. Again, not one hundred percent done, but the majority of of it's done. The hardest part of it's done, the filming of it. <laughs> it's not only that. It's like, okay, so so you take the tax write off, right, for all these movies to save money, but then you have one of the biggest shows on TV right now. That just premiered. Yeah. That that that's what I don't get. It's like, like if you have one of the biggest shows on TV right now, um, but you you're still trying to save money by cutting all these movies and TV shows and TV shows that haven't cut, come out yet. Like I don't know, it doesn't it doesn't make sense. But maybe it's a legal thing. <laughs> like I don't know. But um, yeah. It's, it's, it's a bad way to start off this merger and to be honest they should just release the bad movie at this point yeah and it's it doesn't make you like excited and confident in the future of hbo max either because i think they already said that their hbo max and discovery plus are going to merge into another streaming service but just the fact like some big content that was supposed to be on there like back girls and hbo max exclusive that's going to be gone and then i think reports about they might be done with original programming for HBO Max. So that raised in question, you know, is the Penguin show still going to be going on? The Arkham series that was going to be set in the universe of the Batman being developed by Matt Reeves. Is that still going on? I believe I've heard the Penguin show still okay, but I mean, how can you be confident anymore? That's the thing. The stuff that we're excited about, you can't be 100% sure that this is, you know, we're going to see this stuff, even if it's in production and filming has done on it, because now they, they set a precedent now where you can't be too confident that this stuff's going to see the light of day, no matter how far into production it is. And just, again, trying to attract new talent, too, to work for you and develop new content. And that's probably going to be hard to do for some creative forces and filmmakers and TV show creators to work for Warner Brothers Discovery, because in the back of their mind, hey, our film cannot see the light of day and be deleted after all the hard work that we put into it. So it's just a real mess, I think, as you said, there's a bad way to kick off this merger and just do, doing things that's unpre- unprecedented. That's not for the better. So just tons of stuff with that. That's just disappointing. But yeah, and it, 
Uh, just one more thing. So, yeah. so with with what you said, are they gonna sort of like be? Uh, are they gonna sort of be like like Netflix, where it's like they're like I don't know, Better Call Saul, right? That's not a Netflix original show. It's an AMC show that they put on Netflix, right? Mm. Is is that what you're saying? HBO Max is gonna do? Yeah, I think they're just going to – that actually brings us to our next point that I wanted to talk about where HBO Max, like it seems like their content's going to get a lot smaller because they just remove tons of stuff. It's not shows that I've watched, but I know people who have seen it and they were disappointed that they removed a lot of original programming that was exclusive to HBO Max, animated and live action, and they're just gone because they're not available anywhere else. That's just what makes it so frustrating too or like – if you had the option to buy physical copies or see it somewhere else, but no, they're H- HBO Max exclusive. They're gone now. You cannot find copies of that anywhere. That's kind of a scary thought to have for future projects that are exclusive. But and it also makes me think HBO Max was. I mean, it's a great service. There's tons of stuff to watch on there, and you're paying a, a good price for it, fourteen ninety nine a month. And if but if they keep removing content and cancel projects, it's like, is it going to be worth that monthly price anymore? Uh, It's just everything about it is just frustrating. But going back to your point, um, the other big thing was the news we got earlier this week regarding my most anticipated Batman project, Batman Uh Cape Crusader. Um, (laughs) And I saw the headline saying the series not moving forward with HBO Max. I was like, I let out the biggest no in my head, (laughs) like even topping Darth Vader's no in Revenge of the Sith. (laughs) Oh, wow. (laughs) But man, I just I got really scared. I so, thought, oh, don't tell me this is a casualty and this is now canceled. But in all the trade reports, it was saying the still being developed, the, the series is still being worked on, and that's also some of the Looney Tune movies you were talking about. It's in the same uh, status of Batman: Cape Crusader, where they're not going to be moving forward on HBO Max, but now they're going to be shopped, and that's going to where you're, you're talking about how even though. This is so weird, Dane. <laughs> Warner Brothers has their own streaming service, HBO Max, but they don't yeah. want to put their most popular and probably lucrative IP I, IPs on there. DC, Batman, Looney Tunes on their own streaming service. They want to license it out now. So beware of the Batman. I mean, not beware of the Batman. Batman K Crusader could be on Netflix. It could be on Hulu. I believe some reports came out a few days ago saying how there's actually very strong interest from Netflix and Hulu to buy the licensing rights for Batman Cape Crusader. And again, I'm not a financial person as far as knowing how this is really going to benefit Warner Brothers. Maybe it does. Maybe they will make more money um, to license it out than having it on its own streaming service. But it just feels so weird. It doesn't make sense to me how you have your own streaming platform and you're not having your most popular ip is on there but you're gonna license them and sell them out it's just that's what it's going to become now so that's why i think the f- future for hbo max or just warner brothers plans for streaming in general just what it's going to be like is it going to be more licensing these shows and ips out to different streaming service um instead of having it on their own so it's it was just it's just weird but as I'm still thankful that Batman Cape Crusader, again, is still in development and is being shopped around. But am I 100% confident now that I'm going to see the series? Sadly, not anymore. I mean, how can I be after what's been going down? So it's just I'm more hopeful that, yeah, I'm eventually going to see it. But just right now, you just never know. And that's just a really disappointing feeling to have. <laughs> yeah. Um, well, you know. <laughs> After you said that, it sort of makes sense because they, they would make more money licensing it out to Netflix or a Hulu or whatever, right? But I guess <laughs> I mean, like, what I don't understand is like, like, kind of like what you were saying is like you have this whole library of Batman stuff, right? You have the movies, you have the new movie, we have the the old uh, animated series. You have all of the animated series like on one service, right? Yeah, it's all there. And then yeah. with this new show, you are going to shop it out to Netflix. So like, 
instead of going to HBO Max, like you have to go to Netflix or you have to go to Hulu or whatever. It really doesn't make any sense. Um, it, it, it's sort of like when Disney Plus launched and I can't remember which which movie it was. It was either Rogue One or it was Solo was, it was exclusive solo. to Netflix. Yeah. And so like it wasn't available on on Disney Plus or like how the Spider-Man movies are on Disney Plus. Or at least weren't on Disney Plus, right? They, yeah. They're on like Stars or Showtime or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um it's it, it really doesn't make any sense because like all all of your viewers like are going to a different streaming service, but I guess licensing the movie out and like all of that money that'll that'll come into you know Disney or Warner Brothers Discovery is is more than ha- having the complete library on your one service. So I mean I I guess like for money wise it makes sense, but I don't know like I, I'm just thinking like what if you have Netflix. Like, like, what if you're a kid and your parents have Netflix, right? And then you see the be I mean, sorry, <laughs> that on the Cape Crusader show on Netflix, and the, but but you, but they don't have HBO Max, and like you, you want to see the other Batman stuff, but you can't because it's locked away on HBO Max. But you, you, you know, and you only have Netflix. It kind of doesn't make any sense, you know? Yeah. But, it's know. going to be really inconvenient for us, the consumer, that's for sure. To have everything, like like you said, everything was there already. All the Batman animated series stuff is in one spot. Now it won't be for the newest one, which is, just, again, frustrating. I don't know. I guess it's all about the money for Warner Brothers that's, Discovery yeah. it, rather than the convenience, which is unfortunate. Um, which, yeah, an unfortunate reality, but... I don't yep. know. It's 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 not only that. It's also like the the HBO Max original content. It's like I don't I don't see how. I mean, I guess like the production costs or whatever. But like I don't see the point of just porting over shows. You know, like it. Uh, Netflix has its original shows, and like I don't know. It it, it doesn't make any sense. But yeah. Yeah, it's just, again, frustrating, not a good coming out party for the Warner Brothers Discovery merger with all the stuff going down. And then kind of moving away from the HBO Max side of things is just the future of the DC films, theatrical films moving forward. And again, it's the same old stuff. And I got to I'm going to be totally honest here. There's been a lot of talk about Warner Brothers and Discovery, how they're going to have a new 10 year plan for DC film. It's going to be the priority and they're trying to find their and this has been used everywhere the last few weeks they got to find their own kevin feige i think he even the new ceo said that in the conference call or report or somewhere is like we need to find our kevin feige for dc films and it was just reported this week that um they might have found it was uh dan lynn as uh used to be a producer and he's in talks to be ahead of dc films and just dc in general as far as films and television shows but I got to be honest now, Dean, I just, I don't get excited about that stuff anymore. It's just, I'm going to wait and see because how many times have we been through this and have heard 10 year plans for DC films and different people in charge and having plans moving forward. It's, and it just doesn't go anywhere. It has to reset or get new people in charge to do this stuff. So I'm always going to look forward to DC films and be excited for them. But as far as like hearing this behind the scenes stuff as far as who's in charge and what's the like the state of uh, the DCEU, the universe being reset or just going back. It's just, I'm not investing like my, I don't want to say time or anything, but it's like, I guess my excitement level with that anymore. I'm just going to wait and see what happens. I'm, like I said, I'm going to see these films when they do come out and get closer to release. I'm going to be excited and see them, but just, um, that po- the potential, I guess, the excitement for the potential of a DC universe, it's just, it's not there for me right now because, we, like I said, we've been through this for almost 10 years now. Uh, the 10-year plan has been, like, 
doing these new 10 year plans almost like there hasn't been a good 10 year plan and now they're going to start a new one it's just yeah frustrating to like kind of be going in the same like a circle with dc movies so I, i'm hoping for the best i'm hoping that this does work out where dan lynn does become dc's kevin feige and they do have a solid 10 year plan and it lasts and they stick to it and they create a cohesive universe i mean I would love nothing more, but the past track record doesn't leave me to, uh, too hopeful that that's going to be the case. Hopefully this time is the time and I'm proven wrong. Um, but it's just like, I'm just at that moment now, whatever happens, happens. So it's like, we'll, we'll see, but I'll be there again. I don't want to sound like, Oh, I'm giving up on DC films. It's like, no, I'll be there. I get, always get excited for these films. It's just the process and behind the scenes stuff of how these films get made and, the potential that's there but never comes to fruition that's what's getting tiring so um, we'll see about this one but that's just another thing and even right now um movies are getting pushed back shazam is supposed to come out shazam 2 fear of the god is supposed to come out this year it got pushed back to 2023 aquaman got pushed back later to 2023 so the only other dc movie we're getting this year is black adam and then it's going to be a long wait for the others and who knows about the flash <laughs> i mean uh, that's still supposed to be, yeah. I think, summer 2023, but who knows at this point. So it's just, again, I, right now, I'm just at when these movies finally come out and we know they're coming out, that's when I'll be excited for them. Yeah, I don't I don't believe them. When it comes <laughs> to this 10-year 10 10 year plan thing. Um, honestly, just release Batman movies at this point. You've tried the interconnected thing it didn't work it really didn't work at least for me uh well you can't say it what, worked um in a general audience sense either in a financial standpoint i mean look at all the resets they have to try to do with these other standalone films that don't sure. connect to the main universe so it, it just hasn't worked in general obviously it has its fans but not it didn't succeed on the level where it needed to again you shouldn't copy marvel that's the worst thing you can do. It's 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 like the if 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 the A's copied what the Yankees do, it just wouldn't work. <laughs> yeah, it it's, wouldn't and it's work. impossible. <laughs> yeah, and it's impossible. Um, you should just do Batman movies and do these weird little indie films that are actually really big productions, um, like the Joker. You know, you should just do that. Uh, I I don't think I don't think it's possible at this point to like sort of like combine all of these different aspects that you have with the I don't know whatever this Flash movie is gonna be um, the Aquaman movie or the Black Adam movie whatever you're doing with Shazam too um, I and, and 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 you know taking all those movies and just combining them into into one universe uh, you know it's it's like with uh, hindsight is 2020 but like you could tell from the first or the second iron man move that they had a sort of a plan of what marvel had so, sort of a plan of what they wanted to do with with um their extended universe and everything um I don't really think that that's feasible with these movies that we're getting right now, you know, uh, in, in the DC universe with Batman 2 or Batman 1 and 2. Uh, this, Like I said, the Black Adam thing, the Justice League thing, um, Birds of Prey. It's, it's, at this point, just have them be separate universes. You can't combine all of these different aspects. If they're too far apart to to really come together, I mean, can you really imagine the 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 Batman that we got in the Batman teaming up with Jason Momoa's Aquaman? Can you really imagine that in your head? Mm -hmm, exactly. can, and do, and if you can, that, does it sound like a really good idea? So at this point. You know, like I said, just, just have them be separate universes. You tried, you, you really tried 
with two separate movies of the same movie to try to connect all of this. Um, and it didn't work. It, it, it just didn't work. And at this point, it's just better if it's just two separate things. And you can have, you know, a movie like The Joker or The, the, the Joker 2, which is going to be a musical. You, you, you can have that. And these weird little niche films, just do that. That's the best you can do right now. And then maybe 20, 20 years from now, you can have the reset, you know. But for, for like, the, the, the immediate future, it just won't work. It, 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 it won't. And if, if you did do it, I don't see people going out to see it. So, yeah, yeah, I mean, the only way to make, if you, like, if they really want to have a Marvel has, the only way to do it is to do a complete reset wipe out everything you have to start fresh with new actors new series and that and that means getting rid of the movies already in production like jason momoa's aquaman gal gadot's wonder woman now robert pattinson and matt reeves batman and but are they really going to do that no those are still obviously with the batman that was hugely successful they're going to continue that um aquaman was hugely hugely successful and they want to continue that with the second one and everyone's still Obviously, Wonder Woman 1984 wasn't too successful, but everyone still loves Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. And so if you were to do a complete reset, I don't think fans would be happy, but that's the way you would have to do it in order to start fresh with a brand new DC universe to build up to what Marvels have. If that's what they really want, but I really don't see that happening. So again, it just that's why I'm just not getting overly excited about this new 10-year plan that they're going to have and what it's going to be. So, but... Should be an interesting ride, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> do Do you think? I mean, uh, they're they're not going to cancel the Flash, right? They're, I I, they're not I gonna, don't. <laughs> yeah. I don't think so. But at this time, at this point, would it really shock me? Probably not. Not after what happened with yeah. Batgirl. But um, yeah. I right now I still I don't see that happening at this moment. Mm. But and yeah. things are. That's the other thing too. It's like. Because you keep hearing uh, about Ben Affleck, he's coming back in Aquaman, the second one, and I think I think we talked about in this last one where originally it was supposed to be Michael Keaton in that, but since Aquaman was coming out before the Flash, that that's why they put Ben Affleck in there for continuity. But now Aquaman is going to come out after the Flash, but Ben Affleck is still in it. So who knows what they're going to do as far as who the Batman's going to be in the, that that universe? Because I think the original plan was for Michael for Ben Affleck to exit in the flash movie and have michael keaton kind of take over as that universe's batman but who knows now at this point <laughs> yeah let's just have three batman batman right let's have you michael know, keaton let's have ben affleck let's have robert pattinson and you know what? bring up michael keaton imagine like if he's frustrated with all of this he did a movie batgirl that nobody's gonna see the Flash is still technically scheduled for release, but that's been pushed back a ton. And not to mention all the bad publicity that's been kind of surrounding your its lead actor with Ezra Miller and having to deal with that. Yeah. So I was like, I wonder if he's just going to wash his hands of this. Like, you know what? I It was awesome to come back. It would have been cool. But this hasn't been what I was hoping it to be. Because the return of Michael Keaton as Batman should have been just this grand thing that everyone everyone is still excited for, but kind of the, some of the juice is taken away from that because of the delays and the stuff going on with the flash. And now another appearance by Michael Keaton that we're never going to see in Batgirl. It's just taken away from the really cool return he could have had with his iconic care his iconic portrayal of Batman. It's, that's another disappointing aspect. And I wonder if he's going to be done with it too. Yeah. And like, it, it's, it's sort of like, what's the point at this yeah. At, at, at this time, you know, like you you're bringing back Michael Ke- Michael Keaton, right? And he was supposed to be in the Batgirl movie, like you said. So like, and and he's gonna be in the flesh, right? So like, we're missing a performance and a piece of the story uh, in the Batgirl movie, and what like it is it, it, it's, it's just gonna disappear, right? As as you as you said, that the Batgirl performance is just going to disappear, and then he's going to appear in the Flash. So like, is 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 the Flash uh, 
Michael Keaton Batman missing a part of his story already? Yeah, yeah that's what <laughs> that makes it so disappointing, <laughs> frustrating, weird, everything <laughs> surrounding this whole scenario is just so unprecedented. It's so strange. Yeah. Well, for me, you know, personally, it's it's gonna be more of the same. You know, it's gonna be the wait for the Tim review, wait for the Rotten Tomato score, um, and 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 see if I want to go to uh, make a sojourn to the movie theater to to see this movie or not, see these movies or not. So, because uh, because I know for you, it's gonna be a, I'm gonna go and see these movies, right? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so for me, it's gonna be a wait for the Tim review. Um, and the Rotten Tomato score at this point, because it it doesn't sound good to me. It it really doesn't. Uh, missing a piece of the story, uh, the Michael Keaton story at least. Um, I don't know if that Batgirl was supposed to be part of the Ezra Miller Flash and the the Jason Momoa Aquaman and the Gal Gadot Wonder Woman thing. Uh, but you know, it's, it, it really doesn't sound good to me. Uh, it's, it's, it's sort of like, uh, it's, it, it's, it's sort of like, um, going to have a dinner, going out to a restaurant and then like, it's a, it's a food that you don't like. Like for me, it'd be like seafood, <laughs> you know, it's like, ah, uh, okay. I mean, I guess I'll have some of the chicken then. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah uh, it doesn't sound good to me Tim no it doesn't uh, yeah just a disappointing couple, last couple of weeks regarding Warner Brothers and DC stuff but at the same time sadly we're kind of getting used to it by now <laughs> unfortunately yes um, so, uh, you know what let's end, end our feature topic on something good Tim what do yes. you say? I would love Let, that. Let's talk about House of the Dragon that premiered last week. Yes. What did you think, Tim? Because I'm really curious. Because I don't know. Did, did you read that Fire and Blood uh, book? No, I didn't. I didn't read oh, it. Okay. Okay. So, like, for me, I had read a Game of Thrones before, like, way, way, way before the, the show came out. And... Um, oh, really? I never knew that. Yeah, like <laughs> it was actually one of the first fantasy books I've ever read. Um, I read it before I read uh, uh, the first uh, uh, or Fellowship of the Ring. Um, it's uh, yeah, the, the, that was the first, like I was a kid, and again, that is not a book for kids. <laughs> I was gonna say yeah, I probably shouldn't be reading it <laughs> if you're a kid. Yeah, but um, yeah, uh, I had read *A Game of Thrones*, um, that first book of *A Song of Ice and Fire*, you know, and I, uh, so I knew what I was getting into going into the uh, um, the the *Game of Thrones* show. Real quick, game. Uh, I'm just curious, like, yeah. how did you find out about the book, and what made you want to get that one? Uh, easy. Uh, this was. Uh, again, if, if there's any kids listening to this, ask your grandparents about bookstores, what bookstores <laughs> were. Uh, yeah, there's but, still some Barnes and Nobles out there. <laughs> <laughs> really? I haven't seen them. I still uh, go but, there. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I went to a Walden Books, Tim. I don't know if you remember that. Oh, story, I remember but... <laughs> Walden's. Yep. I remember Walden. <laughs> I went to a Walden Books and they had the display out. Uh, really really quick Dane was when I was yeah. real little uh, Walden's books I at first I thought it was Waldo's books because of where's Waldo the books <laughs> so I thought oh this is like a bookstore of like named after the Waldo character <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah I could see that Tim uh but yeah I went into Walden books and they had a display up for the paperback um version of a Game of Thrones, and um, I want to say there was dragons on it. I'm pretty sure there was dragons on the um, on the display with uh, 
uh, swords and stuff, all the different swords. Um, I, I I can't remember what the name of the um, the Stark sword is, like Icebringer. Uh, ice. I think it's just ice. Ice, right? So so like ice was I on it, I guess, and like looked really cool. I asked my dad if I could get it, and he said yeah because it was you know like a five dollar or seven dollar paperback. Okay. <laughs> I ended up uh, getting it, reading it, loving it, uh, not understanding uh, some of it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, like uh, I knew what I was getting into going into uh, the Game of Thrones TV show, at, at least some parts of it, right? Like so, like oh, Ned Stark dies at the end. I knew mm-hmm. that, right? I knew, um, uh, again, I I forget the name of. Uh, the dire wolf that that uh, Ned has to kill. Uh, uh, lady, sadly. <laughs> lady, right? Yeah. yeah, I remember all of these um, these big major plot points, like uh, especially in the beginning with um, the 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 ice walkers. Tim, <laughs> uh-huh. I'm sorry, I I totally forget uh, Game of Thrones, but like um, White Walkers, but White Walkers, yeah. <laughs> I, I remember the, that uh, that party getting attacked by the White Walkers and Ned having to behead the, um, the uh, that guy that ran away. Uh, so I remember I remembered like the major plot points. I, I I didn't get the whole political intrigue, of course, because I was a kid. You know, like how, how did how did Ned get betrayed? You know, I. I didn't understand any of that, but like with, with Game of Thrones, it sort of explained it to me better because, you know, I was an adult at the time the show came out. Um, it was only with season two, three, four, whatever, that it was a totally new show for me because I didn't read any books, any of the books after that. Um, so, yeah, like going into this show, it was more of a... Um, I have no idea what, who these people are or what the story is. I mean, I sort of get what King's Landing is, uh, but as for the characters, like, I don't know, Viserys, I, I don't know who that is. Damon, don't know who that is. Rhaenyra, especially, don't know who she is. Um, don't know the where they, that they're at politically. Um, so yeah, for me, this was a completely new experience. So yeah, like for you, Tim, what was your first, uh, impressions of it? Yeah. So I was kind of keeping away from full details. I knew what it was going to be about because when I was first getting into Game of Thrones, I really dove into a lot of the history and the lore, those history and lore videos that were special features on the Blu-rays. They're just so good. They're about just expanding the world and the characters. And so one of those stories I remember thinking was really cool was the Dance of Dragons, the Targaryen Civil War. And then I found out, oh, that's what's going to be the show's going to be about. House of the Dragons is going to focus on that event and those characters. It's like, okay, cool. And then that's I think that'll make for a great series. So I was just kind of going into it, knowing the very basics of kind of what that event was about. And And I refreshed myself watching those history and lore videos again. Um, like a couple of days before the series premiered just to get uh, myself more familiar with that event and some of the characters. And that just really got me hyped up for it, thinking, okay, this is going to make for a cool series. And the first episode, I I really dug it. Uh, it's It was like a different type of premiere episode than the first episode of Game of Thrones, but yet it still had that feel of like, it's good to be back in Westeros in this world and uh, the, introducing new characters. I thought they did a good job. Um, and establishing, again, what the show is going to be about with this area of the Targar- Targaryen dynasty where um, King, uh, I believe it's King Viserys, who's the one, um, the main character or the main king right now, the main timeline in the, where the series second place, naming uh, Rhaenyra the heir to his throne once he dies after losing um, his first poor son, which was uh, such a tragic and traumatic traumatic. Um, moment in this first episode that they had to go through and then how that's going to cause conflict obviously with other Targaryens who feel they have a right to the throne and then just setting up what I know is going to take place down the line in the Dance of Dragon stories 
Uh, I thought was set up really good in this episode. But another thing I really liked about it that I wasn't expecting is just still kind of because we know it's a prequel series, obviously, but planting those little seeds for the events that happen in Game of Thrones. Because I like that moment where Viserys was talking to uh, Rhaenyra about when he names her the heir and how he says the information gives her the information that only the kings of Westeros and the Targaryens know about, which is about the dream that Aegon the Conqueror had about, um, they don't know yet, but the White Walkers and preparing for that and how he has that Valyrian steel blade dagger that he gives to her, which we know is eventually the dagger that Arya uses to kill the Night King um, in the Long Night. So I like how they're kind of planning where, because I didn't know this going in, how it is something that each Targaryen king knew about, how it was a secret that they were passing down from generation to generation about the eventual war that was to come with the white walkers and even calling it a song of ice and fire which is like what that uh i guess that dream that Aegon the conqueror had is being passed down so i did like ask that aspect as well as a nice cool way to tie it into the events of game of thrones uh almost 200 years later down the line so yeah i really liked it i really thought they did a good job of setting up the story for this time period and leading up to that targaryen civil war and this again good to be getting new game of thrones content <laughs> back on uh, TV again, because I got to be honest, um, when I was uh, watching those history and lore videos just to get familiar with the story again, it just really got me um, into a big Game of Thrones like deep dive as far as going back and rewatching some episodes. Now I want to rewatch the whole series. I did get the 4K box set um, not too long ago, and now I'm in the mood just to rewatch the whole series again, because I haven't yet to watch that in 4K, which would be awesome. Then I... Back in 2016, when I first started watching Game of Thrones, um, I got the books and I read a Game of Thrones and I read a Clash of Kings. The Clash of Kings I finished in 2017, but I haven't continued with the other, the next three books, just due to various reasons. Um, Star Wars novels coming out that I was reading, just doing other stuff. <laughs> but um, just this past week, I go, you know what? I'm in such a Game of Thrones mood now. I'm going to go back and start reading the books again. So I just started reading. A Storm of Swords this week and just really enjoying that now and just really fun just to be like fully immersed in the Westeros world again. So um, House of the Dragon just did a great job of at least doing that. Um, not only enjoying that series, but just getting me back into the whole Game of Thrones universe again has been great. So yeah, I really dug it. Yeah, I'm I also like you, Tim. I really love this show and like it's oh my god, like the 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 fact that the king essentially kind of kills his own queen. Yeah. You know, uh, that that really surprised me. And it, it, in the end, it didn't work. You could see it coming with, with, with all of the advertising that they're doing and all of the trailers, because we, of course, know that Renera is going to be, be uh, air presumptive. Um, yeah, I, I really like this show. I... I... I initially thought that the CGI of the dragons wasn't going to be very good because I didn't really like how the CGI was in the in trailers. Mm. But, like, um, I'm so glad that, like, they got, like, all of that looks great. And, you know, like, it's now you, you, you have to explain to me, Tim. So, so what is the Dance of the Dragons? It, are, are we seeing the Dance of the Dragons right now? Is, is, is that the war between, that's going to eventually happen between Damon and Rhaenyra? Eventually, but here's the thing. I mean, maybe the show might do something different, but Damon mm. and Rhaenyra, they're actually going to be on the same side. Um, Damon actually marries her later on. And they, oh, oh, right. And they yeah, go they to marry war with... Yeah. yeah. They go to war with... Um, trying to think of the family side that they go to war with but it's another i believe it's another aegon targaryen who i, I believe it's like renera is away from king's landing she might be at dragonstone and then another targaryen i think another aegon is aegon or aemon again this, i'm getting a little confused here but they take once viserys dies they get named the king to take over but renera's like no i was pronounced the heir of the Iron Throne by my father, and that's where the conflict clashed. But I'm, I'm a little, I can't remember exactly who the other side of the family is that they're challenging and they're going to go to war with. I think those characters have not been introduced yet in the first episode, but eventually will later. I see. Because 
not make sense with um with the, that that one scene where um uh Damon puts that that necklace on yeah. uh mm. Renera. Yeah, like I was getting like a weird vibe. It's like, are they gonna get together? <laughs> yeah. That's a little weird, but uh whatever. Well and, not the Targaryens, they marry in family. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they marry the yeah, yeah, I was about to say. Um but yeah, I like I, I yeah, I love the show. Um and Another I, cool I, thing too that I oh, forgot sorry. about Dane is that yeah. how the series like we're gonna get a time jump. I'm not sure it's gonna be this episode or if it's gonna be certain episodes are gonna be where Renera is young or when she's older. But we're gonna get the majority of the story I believe is when she's older and an adult. So I'm not too sure how long we're gonna see her at this age as a kid. Uh, I see. Oh right, yeah. That there's there's two actresses right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That play Renera. Yeah. Ah, uh, I see, I see. Uh so so we're gonna flash forward in time and then it's gonna be the yeah, so quote unquote dance of the dragons. Yeah, whatever. that's where it'll really begin, yeah. Ah, uh, I see. So this was just Tim. This was the prequel to House of the Dragon. The prequel to the prequel. <laughs> yeah, the prequel to the prequel. Wow. Okay. Ah, uh, I see. Okay. Yeah, there's two different two different actresses that play um, uh, Renera, Millie Al- Alcock and Emma Darcy. Yeah, so I'm just wondering, like, how they're going to do that? Is it going to be, you know, going back and forth, and during an episode, or we're just going to get all the yeah. story with her as a young kid done, and then it's going to time jump, and then just moving forward is going to be her as adult all the time, or is it going to be a mix? So that'll be interesting to see how they do that. Yeah, and like how again, like like you said, they might do something different, but like all all of the dialogue heavy scenes, which is all of the the the, the King's Council scenes, uh, um, they're they're repeating and repeating and repeating that Damon is a tyrant, yeah, and that he's not going to be a good king, and that he's just he spends a lot of money and all of this sort of stuff. And they're really hammering home that he will not be a good king, period. And we, we saw and how like, brutal he could be and yeah. punishing criminals, right? <laughs> yeah. And uh, sort of like not killing, but uh, uh, crippling auto high yeah. son, yeah. <laughs> son um, in that jousting tournament. And then it, it was only after he was bested by uh, that one guy that he uh, sort of was like, oh, okay. Uh, but so like they're hammering home that Damon is this bad guy, right? That he's not going to make a good king. So like it makes me think that it, the Dance of the Dragons, quote unquote, is going to be Renera versus Damon and it's going to be a war of succession, yeah. right? Like the, the war of Spanish succession, like where Game of Thrones was based on War of the Roses. It seems like this is going to be based on uh, the War of uh, Spanish Succession. So, like, so what what is in my head, Tim, is that the dance of the dance of the dragons, right, is pretty much just the real life uh, uh, War of Spanish Succession. Mm-hmm. So. Okay, so so they're not going to get married then. Well, right. Well, we'll see. I mean, that's the thing. Yeah, are they right. going to go something different, or are they going to follow to what the story that was in the books? So yeah. that's that's the stuff I haven't like dived into in the show. Like maybe that information's out there already, but like I kind of don't want to know. I'll see as the series progresses and see what direction they go into. But I don't know, I kind of hope I do hope they follow closely to what's already been established in the history with the Targaryens that we know about already. But Tim, you have to be, you have to be my Wikipedia, my Timopedia, if you will, <laughs> of uh, House of the Dragon and Game of Thrones and A Song of Ice and Fire. I'll do my best as I'm getting more, more back into it. Hopefully I'll be able to answer more questions that you may have. Yeah, because like, who was who that first king that we see right off the bat? That shows uh, series. Yeah, what was his name? Who was yeah, that like guy? An, 
I'm blanking on the name already. But it was yeah. kind of like the same thing where he didn't like the heirs, like all his heirs has like have died, so they had to he had to choose an heir to the throne to do a council. They're like he didn't choose. Like it was this like a big council that they had to name the succession. I mean, obviously it was a big deal. We saw how big that room was where they named Viserys the king. Um, so uh, it's Jaharis. Jaharis. Jaharis okay. Tar- Targaryen. So, yeah, so that I think that was in line to what the established history was already. So they're following closely to at least in that time period to what um, was in the book, I believe. The um, the queen that died or was killed or was murdered is uh, Ama Aaron, right? Okay. Mm. Yeah. But yeah, anyway, I, I, I love the show. It sounds like you like love the show, Tim. Mm-hmm. Um, so, yeah. I, get- I, I, I will say the one show, or there's actually two shows I really hope for. As much as I think this is off to a great start, watching the History and Lords video again, and a series based on Aegon's conquest of Rest of Rose, so that would be an amazing series. And I hope one day we do get that. And also, yeah, what too, was I don't- that? What, what was that? Because they mentioned that in the show, like, and, and then he couldn't conquer one part of the of the uh, continent or something. Yeah, I believe it was Dorne, if I remember right. Dorne, yeah, yeah. right, right. Because they they talk about that one guy, is it, that, um, Renera and her friend are like, oh, he's really good looking, right? And then yeah, oh, it's Dornish, right. and then, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah. So like, what what was that? It, 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 was that just a uniting of all of the kingdoms? Is that what that was? Yeah, well, he yeah, he goes to Westeros, like, the last, like, of the people from Valera with the dragons, and then the family, the Targaryen family, wanted to, you know, unite the seven kingdoms under one rule. And he, you know, with the power of dragons, he goes to each of the different seven kingdoms. Uh, and there's some really cool battles that were described there. Um, that take place that allows them to conquer. And then you just see the different rulers like try to fight, but then they have to end up bending the knee and falling under his rule. And then the whole situation with uh, the Starks and uh, Winterfell, where they didn't even have a fight. The he uh, just bent the knee to Aegon without even putting up a fight because he knew it was a fight they couldn't win, and he was known as the king who knelt <laughs> amongst uh, the Stark family. So just a lot, a lot of cool different, I think, aspects to how he conquered Westeros, and just for some really cool battles, I think we would see too. It's, and just how different families get established, because that sounds like the Baratheon family um, came to be the rulers of Storm, and like I believe it was one of his um, like close associates was a Baratheon, and once they took over the ruler of Storm's End, um, he put I forget his name, but he put that Baratheon to take over the rule of Storm's End, and that's how the Baratheon family became established and um, became the rulers of that part of the Seven Kingdoms. So just a lot of stuff of seeing the beginnings of the houses and stuff would take place there as well. So I just think it would make for a great series. So so what happened to uh, Valeria? It, it like... got pretty much destroyed by, I believe, a volcano that erupted. And oh. the people, I think, were too, like, Either too like proud, haughty, like think they were like invincible, uh, with the dragons and like like certain magical abilities, but it all came crumbling down. But the Targaryens left there before that happened. Oh, I see. I see. So, and yeah, also too, uh, I would love a series on Robert's rebellion too. I keep hearing that that's not going to happen, yeah. but man, there's that would just be amazing to see play out. Just visually too, because certain like the armor they wear, Robert's armor. Rhaegar's armor and the battle at the Trident that they have. There's some like great artwork. I just have really cool pieces of armor. I think would just really be awesome to see on screen. But then again, just the fully establishing that story of how everything went down, I just think would be awesome to see. What if they did a um a show um uh, with Arya of like uh, her travels of what is west of Westeros. Oh, I'd love that too. I think I'd be down for that. <laughs> Just give or, me more stories. Or what about a mountain show? Yeah. Uh, uh, I'm not sure if he's a character we could watch on a weekly basis, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, what is he doing when he's not doing a fight? 
right? I, I, I don't think he's doing anything else but killing. I mean, that's all he does. <laughs> <laughs> it's always, that's all we see him doing. Yeah. And all, all the seasons of Game of Thrones. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. I'll think we can watch that on a weekly basis. Yeah. What about uh, Pedro Pascal show? Right. So he's got The Last of Us and he's got Mandalorian and then whatever he's doing in Game of Thrones. Right. I mean, who's going to turn down more Pedro Pascal stuff? I mean, <laughs> he's awesome. So I would love to see more of him as overall <laughs> cartel. Um, so, yeah, that, that, I, I guess we'll review each episode, Tim, as, it, as they come out on, on each of our shows. So. Yeah. Well, I guess uh, it'll be two episodes because since we record every two weeks, we'd have two episodes to talk about. Oh, right. Yeah, two episodes. Um, so, yeah, is is that it for our featured topic, Tim? Yeah, I think that's it. Okay. All right. So, uh, is there any news that you wanted to talk about? Talk about? Uh, I think we got all the main news. <laughs> that whole HBO, Warner Brothers, Discovery stuff that uh, went down these last few weeks. So. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I guess the, uh, I guess that's it for our for for this episode. Um, again, go over to the Batman Universe at Facebook.com slash Batman Universe Twitter handles at Batman Universe Tim's Twitter handles at Tim G three eleven. I'll say it this time because you're not feeling so hot, Tim. Always appreciate. And <laughs> my Twitter handle is at Dane says Banana. You can rate and review us on iTunes. Um, you know what I realized, Tim. There is no iTunes anymore. So, like, That's I've true. been saying the wrong thing for a while now. Okay. So Wait, you say, on, yeah. Apple Podcasts? I, I think that, that's all it is, right? Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Right. Are, are we on Spotify? I don't even know. <laughs> yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> um, we're, we're on YouTube. I know Dustin puts our episodes on YouTube, so we're there. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know. Um, so yeah, uh, rate and review us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or YouTube. Even though you can't rate and review people on YouTube, give a thumbs up. Uh, <laughs> give a thumbs up, right? Give us a thumbs up um, on YouTube. Um, and if you want to email the show, you can email the show at uh, I forgot to say that the show's Twitter handle to him. Show Twitter handles at Bad Fans Podcast. There we go. See, it's been a while, then. That's why I'm forgetting everything. <laughs> Gotta get um, the, the rust off. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to email the show, you can email the show at badfansonalpads at gmail.com. So like we say at the end of every single episode, Tim. Because of each and every one of you with all of our recovered hearts from being sick the last week. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, we'll see you guys next time. Be excited, everybody.